Uh, Martin Simmons was definitely um, a platform that propelled me. And for any student that's looking for a place to be um, and looking as far as going off to, don't be scared that coming to Harlan Center won't propel you to certain levels. Because I ended up working on Wall Street, ended up being in the World Cup just from my roots that were, were planted here from Harlan Simmons. My roommate was probably closer to me than my brother, obviously, because we were we grew up together, you know, and. Um, and Chung and I, this day, we, you know, we, we, we talk almost every week and, you know, his problems become my problems and vice versa and we get things done. But yeah, you, the relationships goes on forever. It was a scholarship that they offered me that kind of lured me here because obviously in, my, in, in that time of my life, you know, I couldn't afford school. So everything was, um, I had to have a scholarship and, and Harn Simmons provided that for me. I wasn't a real soccer player in Jamaica. I played soccer, but cricket was my sport. But, um, but when I came here, there was no cricket. So I ended up reverting back to, to soccer because that was gonna pay for my school. We had nine Jamaicans at the time. Actually, we had a, an older one that went through the military. We called him Daddy, Michael Hamlet, who is now a professor at NYU. So we used this academic environment to really propel them. The lack of resources back home couldn't create that learning capacity for these kids. So when they came here, they realized they had the resources. You know, we used to think that players, some of these players come over and they weren't very smart in school. They just didn't have the resources. And, um, you know, to live in the ghettos of, in anywhere, you have to have some type of savviness to you. And, um, you know, and you just got to learn to channel that. It was a great four years here. Um, I got drafted and ended up in playing for Houston Dynamos. I just felt like people were helping me to get to where I am. Um, and I felt like I had to give back. And so I segmented my life to really put forward the effort and to be more of a leader, you know, and, and on my team and bring everybody with me because I wanted to accomplish some personal things. And my parents moved to England in the, or in the late 60s, early 60s, sorry. And, um, you know, and then obviously started a family. So I was born there, um, things didn't work out in my family. Um, you know, my mom decided to go back to Jamaica and she took me and my brother and I went back to Jamaica. We were shuffled around with homes because my mom was sick, you know, so um, I grew up with my grandmother and, um, you know, so, the saying is right, when you grow up with your grandparents, um, you know, the wisdom is a different level. Well, that was the premises of how I grew up. You know, academics first, everything else second. So I decided to do youth clubs, and I, and I started, at, well, at the time there was a small club, a um, couple of hundred kids that I was working with, and then um, decided to grow that. When I left, it was 5,000 kids, Lone Star Soccer Club, we started. And then decided that I wanted to give back and because so many people helped me um, get back into some type of youth type movement and um, took a job in Abilene High, coach soccer and teach math. You know, Abilene High was a pretty diverse, at the time they were going through their boundary changes, at the time it was a very crucial time. And I thought, you know, Mr. Curtis had a vision, you know, that he wanted to bring people in that can break those barriers. And I got the opportunity to go in and get some of the better kids in there that, that, that was going through some rough times, an opportunity to change their lives. And, uh, and, and, and in return, reciprocating, they were changing my life too. You always need that release to give you that confidence and give you the perseverance to keep going through. And then, you know, there's a light at the tunnel and you just gotta look forward to that light and just keep plugging. Sidella Marley, Bob Marley's daughter, um, reached out to me. Um, she, you know, the, obviously, if you know the history of Bob Marley, soccer is a big part of his life. And she felt like she needed to, to, to give back to Jamaica. And our, our youth programs, soccer programs, was in a little bit of a shambles financially um, and so forth. So the, the women's program, um, she kind of took it on their wings and she reached out to me um, to help at the time. I went in and they had a coach there, uh, Marin Gordon was there and, and um, 
I went in and I realized there was so much, they're so far behind. Resources, mentality, work ethic. But one thing they had was the natural gift of being an athlete. And it was just needed somebody to go in and nurture that um, athleticism. And, and obviously, when you nurture something that's very good, it creates confidence and it creates so much more that spins off that. And um, so we went and we didn't qualify that year. I was, I was on the sidelines. I wasn't the head coach at the time. We didn't qualify. I became the head coach that January um, and then took them to the Olympic qualifiers where we were absolutely horrible. Um, we lost to Guyana, we lost to Trinidad in Trinidad. Uh, and then I realized I had to revamp this program. We qualified um, in a very difficult region of the world, the US, Canada, Costa Rica, Mexico. Um, we, we, we surprised the world um, and what we did, first Caribbean nation to go to the World Cup. Um, it, was, it was a definitely a turning point for our country.